In this video, we're going to take the database that we created um, using employee, department, and paycheck, and I'm going to show you how to enter data into MySQL, MySQL. Before we get started, though, I want to refer back to this model because there's a very important concept that we need to understand before we start entering data, and that is in what order must we enter data. There are dependencies in some of these tables, and some of these tables have no dependencies. So it's important to understand those dependencies before we start entering data. As an example, department has no foreign keys, which means that it has no dependencies. Department, in effect, exists by itself. It does supply information to the employee table, but it doesn't depend on any other table because it has no foreign keys. In contrast, employee, of course, depends on department. Why? Because the only valid values for department, the department ID foreign key, are the ones that are in department. Because of referential integrity, you cannot enter a department ID if it doesn't already exist in department. If there is no data in department, you cannot enter any departments for employee. If the only value for department, for example, is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, suppose there are five departments, for example, and therefore the department IDs in department have values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The only valid values for the foreign key and employee, that is the department ID, is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If you enter a 6, for example, for employee, the database will reject it because the department table provides the valid values for employee. That's one of the ways databases keep the integrity of data higher than, say, a spreadsheet. So if employee is dependent on department, we can enter an employee after we've entered all of the departments. Similarly, paycheck is dependent on employee. Why? Well, paycheck is a weak entity. And we know from the definition that we talked about that a paycheck, uh, if a weak entity, if, if an entity is a weak entity, there is dependencies. Employee ID here gets its value from employee, similar to the way it works for department. Except in this case, the employee ID is part of the primary key. We cannot enter a paycheck, therefore, unless the employee exists. So the order, therefore, of entering data must be department first, then employee, then paycheck. If you go out of order, you're going to find that you run into difficulties in entering the data. So let's go back now to the main page in MySQL. We're going to want to open the uh, server to actually see the schemas, that is the databases that are available. So I'm going to click this and it will open up. And you'll notice now we have the schema student 001 employee department. If I open this up, the hierarchy opens and you'll see tables. We won't be using views, stored procedures, or functions, but if I open up the tables, you'll see the tables. And it was very nice of MySQL to actually put the tables in the order in which I have to enter them. So if I click on department, you'll notice three icons come up here. I will simply bring up some of the general information about the department. We typically won't use that. Um, the, this brings up the actual settings for the table. The little uh, wrench here brings up the settings for the table so that you can see its settings. And then finally, this one brings up the actual table itself. Now, one of the things you, want to do, you might want to do is jump in and start entering data, but the first thing you really need to do is hit this button here that says Insert New Row. If I click that, you might, again, be tempted to start entering data, but if you remember, if you look at the, the settings for department, we checked the AI box when we did the settings. AI stands for Auto Increment. That means we cannot actually provide the values for department ID. Instead, we're allowing MySQL to do that. So, when you're entering data, we're not going to enter anything for department ID, but you'll see that MySQL will take care of it for us. So we have a human resources department, and I'm going to hit tab. Again, I'm not going to enter a value for the primary key here because that's going to be handled by MySQL. Then we have an IT department, and I'm going to hit tab. And then I'm going to hit sales. I'm going to hit tab. And then I'm going to hit accounting and I'm going to hit tab. Once I've entered those values, you'll notice that the values here listed for department ID are all null. But again, I'm handing this off to MySQL, so I don't need to worry about that. 
If I hit apply and then hit apply again, this by the way is the actual SQL commands that insert values into a table. So if I hit this, hit apply, here are the values. The script was uh, successfully applied. I hit close and you'll notice that the values now for the department ID are there. Now that I've entered department, let's go ahead and enter some employees and assign them to department. So I'm going to hit this, the little table, and I'm going to insert a new row. Now, unlike the department ID, when we set up the employee ID, we did not check the AI. That means we have to supply the values for the employee ID, not MySQL. By not checking AI, we're saying we're going to assign the employee IDs. We're not going to rely on MySQL to do it. So let's go ahead and we'll give it a value. We'll just come up with some, some fake values here. 1111, my last name, my first name. Oh, and by the way, I've noticed that with MySQL, tab doesn't always work. Sometimes you have to kind of just hit use the mouse. Now I'm going to be assigned to the IT department, of course, so I'm going to assign myself a value of 2. I'm going to hit tab. Now 2222, two, 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 and I'm going to hit tab, and we will put my wife, my wife's maiden name in here, which is Robinson. And again, I'm going to have to click here to move to the next cell. My wife's name is Lorraine, and she, of course, is in human resources. Now we'll do uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, last name, we'll say Andrews. And we'll let we'll put my son's name in there. And he, of course, is in the IT department. And then four, three, two, one. Last name is um, um, Gunther. And we're going to go ahead and say uh, Caitlin. And we're going to assign her to the accounting department. All right, we've entered all of the data, and now we're going to hit Apply. Again, we get the MySQL insert statement, which is going to put the data in, and we hit Apply. Everything works well. Now let's try putting in a, a department ID that doesn't actually exist. So we'll say 5555, last name Brindle, and we'll put Daniel. And let's put him in number seven and we'll say apply the SQL script is generated we say apply and you'll notice it says there was an error and it's the error that is given is cannot add or update a child row a foreign key constraint fails so again this is what I had talked about earlier since there is no department number seven SQL MySQL will not allow us to enter a value of seven because no value of seven exists in the department table so now to review the, t the information that's in the database, I can go ahead and print it out and we can see exactly what has been stored. Similarly with department, I can click this and it will tell me what departments have been stored. Finally, I can go ahead and enter data into Paycheck in a similar way. But again, I have to use the foreign keys uh, that exist in uh, employee ID uh, as a primary key. A foreign key is of course a primary key in another table. So may, I only may use these numbers, which is one of the reasons, by the way, I chose these numbers because they're very, very easy to remember. So let's go ahead and enter a paycheck. Let's say my paycheck, and I'm going to enter a date. In my SQL, I can enter 2023-1204. It's year, month, and day. My employee ID was 1111, and let's say I make $10,000. Oops, 1111, and let's say I enter $10,000. Okay. Now, 2023, 12, and we'll do the next week, which is the fourth. Again, I can repeat the number, my, my employee ID number, because the primary key is the combination of the date and the employee ID. So now let's say, for whatever reason, I got a raise, we'll pay, say, $11,000. If I apply this and go ahead and execute the script, that will apply it and insert the information in the database, which was successful, and I close. Now, if I want to see the results, I can go ahead and do this again. I can hit the execute button and it comes back and you'll notice that the dollars and cents are there and the information has been stored. Uh, the dollars and cents because we had configured uh, the decimal to the, the data type to be a decimal with two decimal places. So MySQL will store that result um, like that. 
So those are some of the suggestions for entering data into MySQL. Be very careful, take your time, and make sure you get your dependencies right, and you should have no trouble.